Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a Wells Gardner K4900 and another Wells Gardner K7000. These are both obviously by the same person or sent sent by the same person. And uh, we'll take the 7000s and since we just done a number of 7000s, set this aside and do this one next or later. And then we'll focus on this uh, 4900. Now, this 4900 has an issue with a a voltage regulator that is arcing. Let me look here um, and verify. Let's see. Okay, <clears throat> the K4900 uh, was recapped, replaced the voltage regulator, uh, HOT, and a resistor. And then as soon as they plugged it in, the VR began to spark. The voltage regulator began to spark. So yeah, the sparking voltage regulator. So. We're going to go through here and see if we can figure out why that is occurring and if that's an accurate statement. So what we're going to do is first plug my camera in because I forgot to plug it in. There we go. Uh, let's open this up and take a look and see if we can figure out what is happening. I left my knife in the other room working on a, uh, working on a pinball machine. I left it in there. No big deal. Hmm, someone, okay, so they replaced the resistor here. Uh, solder work, not too bad. It's not too bad. Okay, what is this? This is an envelope. Let's read what it says, make sure there's no... Okay. Read here. Capped, replaced the voltage regulator, HOT, and the, and the resistor here. As soon as I plugged it in, the voltage regulator started to spark. All right. Let's see if we can visually figure out why that occurred. Uh, neck board seems okay. The color resistors are smashed flat. So let's get those back up off the bottom of the board there. That's better. Uh, well, there's no fuse in it. That's problem number one. Some type of jury rigged situation going on with the fuse. And. Hmm. Didn't say anything about a fuse. Uh, yeah, it's been capped. Okay, on the top side, the only visual oddity would be the fuse holder here kind of being jury-rigged. And then we've also got the resistor here. Let's go ahead and measure it, make sure that it's not open again. Three point four. That's fine. B B plus resistor. Oh, we got a shorted voltage regulator. See how it says zero point five. Uh, we got a shorted voltage regulator. If I was a bet man, we'll go to the case and we'll check. Yep. Hmm. Oh no, we don't.
Huh. That's the case. That's the case. And there's our two legs. Hmm. Well, that's not shorted. I don't recall if that's a correct reading, but that's not a short. STR381 is the correct uh, voltage regulator. Huh. That's very interesting. Let's test our HOT because they replaced that as well. Negative on the frame, touch each leg. And HOT is good. Again, we'll go back, touch the frame, then we'll touch each leg of the voltage regulator. Uh, well, this one here, this one here, it's not shorted. Um, hmm. Let's test our rectifier diodes. Looks like somebody's replaced one of them. That one's okay. That one's alright. That one's okay. And that one's okay. Why is our B plus resistor reading zero ohms? Our main B plus resistor is reading zero ohms. Usually that indicates a shorted voltage regulator, but if we look at the wires, they run here to this R503. We got the red, the red and the blue wires here. They come around and run straight down to here across these two po points right there. Our red, our red and blue wires go to these two points here, right there and right there. These are the two wires going off of the B plus resistor here. So, yeah, um, that's going to be. We'll have to see if we can figure out why that is occurring. So I think what I want to do is actually, is remove the voltage regulator because even though it, I mean, I don't know. I haven't memorized what the reading should be. I mean, it doesn't read shorted from what I can tell, uh, but I want to remove it and then retest our B plus resistor here and see if it still reads shorted. If it does, obviously it's uh, not the voltage regulator. But I don't see how it could, there's nothing to spark to it unless they didn't put the, the uh, insulator back in properly. And the insulator is there, it is installed. Let's just remove it here. Okay, with that out, let's see what our B plus resistor reads now. Ah, it, voltage regulator is shorted. 99% of the time when you read your B plus resistor, if the B plus resistor is shorted, resistors don't short, they open up. They open up or go out of tolerance. So if your B plus resistor re reads shorted, then you've got a shorted voltage regulator. Just, I wasn't sure about the readings, but now I'm absolutely positive the voltage regulator is bad. Because see, now we're not shorted anymore. And what we can do to test the voltage regulator is none of these, none of these legs should read shorted. So if we go to diode checker, we touch our leads, there's a short. So none of these three legs should read to the, fr the frame here. Shorted, that one's open, that one's good, but that should not read to the frame there. You see, shorted. So it, it is, in fact, bad. So let me see if I've actually got any of these. I think I might. Um, STR381. Okay. Let's see if I've got any of those. Uh, not in that bag. That's Geo7 stuff. This is all Geo7 as well, and I just happen to have two STR381s. So we'll grab one here, all right. Hope I don't blow it up, because then I'll only have one left. <laughs> but we should be able to figure out what's going on here. Okay, uh, you know what? Let's grab 
a new insulator as well. Because maybe the insulator is what the problem is. Because there's no reason why it's not going to spark internally. I think what's happening is it's possible that the insulator is bad. So we'll grab a new insulator here. It's not going to be that or that. Here we go. We'll use one of these silicone. Oh, got to open the right bag, dummy. You big dummy. All right, it helps to have all your parts on hand that you need. I went through one day and said, oh, I might need these, I might need these, I might need these, and just ordered a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, it comes in handy. It's a lot easier to get most of this stuff fixed fairly quickly when you actually have a whole stockpile of parts that you, you, you need on hand, I should say. Okay. So now if we check the readings of the good one, or the new one, I should say, versus the old one. So if we go here to here, we saw it was shorted. Here to here, see, there you go. Not shorted. So this leg here, shorted. So we definitely, absolutely, 100% positive bad, eight, uh, bad voltage regulator. So we'll set that aside along with the original uh, insulator. Um, we're gonna have to poke a hole in this one here because there's only two holes in it, so we're going to have to see if we can work some kind of magic here in that old Swiss mountain town. Alright, marked it. Poked it. And... Installed it. Got it. Okay. Now let's get it in the chassis here. There we go. Screw it in. Doesn't need to be too tight, just snug. You don't want to rip through the insulator. There we go. All right, now let's test our B plus resistor again. And assuming that it's no longer shorted, we got uh, progress. Bada bing. Okay, so with that taken care of, uh, we'll have to grab a fuse. But before we do that, let's take a look at the back side because I don't know if we've got. Reflow work on the hot area here where all the pads oxidize over time. So let's take a look. Uh, yep, uh, it's been reflowed. And so has some of the normal problems on the 4900 that you always want to go over. What is this? What is this? Uh, what is that doing there? What's that dang thing doing here? What the hell is that? Huh. R317. I'll have to grab another 4900 and see what's going on there. But uh, the most common... Failure points on the 4900 are this jumper here for the AC, this jumper here for the AC, and this jumper here for the AC. Uh, because these pads will break and crack and oxidize and then you won't have any power, it'll be totally dead. So those have been reflowed. The area here that gets very hot has been reflowed. Um, not too bad. Um, the vertical output or vertical deflection transistors appear to be okay. Um, so other than yeah other than this odd resistor here 
I'm not sure what's going on there. I'll have to grab another 4900 and take a look and see what is going on there and hmm Fifteen is correct. All right, let me grab another forty-nine hundred and see if we can figure out what's going on on here with this R one thirty-seven. And because not only is it odd, it's also got a broken trace here, or it's about to break. Hmm. That's because it's if it's about to break because it's one step closer to the edge. It just needs a little more room to breathe. I'm going to fix this here real quick. There we go. Just add a solder bridge so it's a bit more sturdy. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Well, I don't see anything immediately obvious. Um, so... Flyback looks original. Flyback is absolutely original. Someone's been doing some reflow work on it. The board looks a bit bent, but I don't see anything blatantly obvious. Hmm. Let me grab another 4900, figure out what's going on with this R317, uh, and then uh, maybe we'll just go ahead and power it up, get a new fuse in it, power it up, see what we get. Um, okay, so hang on one moment. All right, so I got this other 4900 here out of a commando machine that uh, has some slight vertical collapse. So it it it's got everything's on this is original. I was the first person to ever remove this from from the chassis or from the monitor. Uh, original caps, everything. So this uh, has a slight collapse across the top, so it needs caps, but. It's been sitting over here off camera for a while for me to get get uh, get to it, but you can see here R three seventeen is quite different here on this one. It's obviously it's right here, so I'm interested to read this and see what it shows. Um, so in circuit, this should be eight point three ohms. All right, so now we'll set this back aside here and. I have to flip this around. Then we got 4.8. Uh, no, that's not supposed to be. Hmm. Well, that is on the vertical hold circuit. No, I apologize. That's on the vertical size circuit. And now that I look at this, the pad is missing. Someone soldered this in to a pad that doesn't exist. Look at this. The pad's gone. And they just stuck the lead through. They stuck the lead through here. That'll be a good thumbnail right there. They stuck the lead through and put solder on it, but there's no pad. There's nothing for it to be soldered to. It's gone. This is what I did earlier, was this. But this is obviously for vertical size. They've got nothing there. I wonder if I could just pull this out here. Or is it soldered on the back side? No, it's just, yeah, right out. It wasn't soldered to anything. So I wonder if this had some type of collapse or, or what. But that's, there's no pad there. Is it stuck to the leg? Nope. Nothing. Wow. Well, there's a problem. Let's fix that real quick. It's not the correct resistor, but having a resistor in there at least will... Give it uh, some type of... 
operation in the circuit. Let's uh, see if we can get something going here. And there we have it. Okay, quick and easy. All right, well, um, let's grab a tube and replace this fuse. You know, actually what I'm going to do here real quick, I'm going to add a little bit more solder to this. Alright, and I want to inspect this fuse holder. We got wires hanging off of the fuse holder here. It's not soldered in very well. That's a bit better. Okay. All right, let's see if I got a four amp fast blow in my bag of 4,900 parts. I might have one for the GO7. Right here, 4 amp fast blow jackpot. <coughs> hmm, pardon me. Okay. Well, We'll snap this in. And grab a tube and fire it up and cross our fingers if the fuse blows out. Um, we'll go from there, see what happens. But for now, I'm going to put my stuff away here real quick. I have a feeling this may be a challenge. Um, not. Usually voltage regulators don't go unless something else is very wrong. So uh, I'm not hopeful that we'll just plug this in and have it work. Hope if it does, great. If not, this may turn into a head scratcher and I'm, I'm fear fearful of that. So let's find out for sure. I'll grab a tube, come right back and see what happens. Okay, tube acquired. We got anode neck, yoke ground, power. We don't need video. I'm just checking to see if it comes on. We don't need remote because all the pots are on the board. So we are hooked up, ready to go. Um, let's see, I keep my hand here on the trigger just in case something goes haywire. We can flip it right back off. And we're hoping for some uh, high voltage here. So let's see, one, two, three. Actually, you know what? Let me keep an eye on the fuse here, see what happens here. One, two, three. Nope. Uh, isolation transformer started humming like crazy and I heard a little click. Uh, fuse did not blow, so yeah, let's uh, see what we can figure out here. Alright, well let's make sure that our voltage regulator is still good and it didn't get taken out again. We'll go to ohms and test the B plus resistor. Ah, oh, crap. 6.7. So something is shorted that is killing the voltage regulator. Something else I noticed here looking off of this other one is that somebody has replaced the B plus resistor which normally resides here and it's 150 ohms. Someone's replaced it with one from I believe a K7000 because they've mounted it to the side here with the K7000 uh, mount and it's 180 ohms versus 150. I don't think that's going to be too critical. Uh, but they've mounted it to the frame. It should be on the chassis itself. But it is wired up right. I made a mistake. R503 here, these two wires here for our, is the, are the wires that run to the B-plus resistor. And this purple and blue wire here uh, that run to this point, uh, 51 and 52, those run to this 3.3 ohm resistor. So that's all correct. 
but someone's replaced the 150 ohm with 180 ohm from a 7000. I don't think that's going to be too critical, uh, but for testing purposes, we can probably remove the one from here and put it on here, but I don't think that's the problem. Um, we can verify they didn't raise any of the pads. Something is either either disconnected, broken, cracked joint, cracked solder, uh, or shorted because the fuse didn't go and the voltage regulator shorted immediately. So we'll have to figure out what's going on here. The fuse is still good. Yep. Yeah. Um, but the voltage regulators, it's shorted on the same pin. Uh, yes, that one's good. That one's shorted. And... Yep, same pin. Well, I've only got one left. Two if you count the one from this one that I could steal, but I don't want to do that. So before we dive too far into this, and replace this with the last one that we have. Let's see if we can find something. All right. And we'll test it out of circuit just to verify. And last time it was this outside one here and, yep, gone, just like the other one. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out the fuse is installed properly. Do we have continuity on the back side? Uh, lost it. Here it is. Yep, okay. So the AC comes in, goes across the fuse through the degauss coil. Uh, C508 is not shorted. Um, D505, good. 506, good. Continuity, continuity. Uh, this solder pad's looking kind of haggard here for R506, but I don't think that's the problem. Uh, and our Filter cap's not shorted. R503 is our B plus resistor. I'm going to go to the next pad over to make sure we have continuity. Um, yep, 172 ohms. So our B plus resistor is good in circuit. Um, R502, not sure what's going on there. Why is that doing that? That shouldn't be doing that. R502. Four point six K R five oh two is going all over the place here. Can you see that? Hmm. So let's try that again now that we've reflowed it. Nope, still going haywire. So that goes to here. And the other one goes to here. Hmm, haywire. R502, it visually seems okay. Let's remove one leg from the circuit. Let's see what it reads out of circuit.
Okay, it's not in circuit anymore. Let's go to ohms, touch the leg. 9.8K. Well, it's not open. That's all I was curious about. Let's solder it back in. <clears throat> and try again here. Why is that happening? Hmm. R505 is 12, 13K. And yeah, it's going to end up going down. So it's the same on that one. R504, 46 ohms. Ah, look at that. 4.3K on the good chassis. And, oh, hang on, hang on. There we go. I was on the wrong pad, sorry. So that's correct. Um, 503, so all this stuff, C506, is that 13K? Yeah. And it's not in backwards, and it's, uh, I can't read it because of the. Let's check. We already checked C508, and it's not shorted. C504, well, that's not shorted. C502 is not shorted. D502, D505 is reading both ways. So is 506. Is that normal? Should, shouldn't be normal. What about this one? Well, apparently that's normal. Okay. So we don't have any bad diodes, we don't have any bad caps. That we we checked this resistor is good. We checked C508. Did we check 501? I don't know. Let's check 501. I'm pretty sure we did. We're just checking to make sure it's not shorted. It is shorted. What the C C501 is this green guy right here? What does it read on the working chassis? Ah, oh, same thing, you trickster. C501 22, let's go to ohms. Just when you think you've got it figured out. 22 ohms exactly, C501 22.6 ohms. So that's not the problem. Dang it. Um, well, I guess we can... It could be the flyback. Let's test... Someone has done a bunch of solder work. Let's test to make sure that we actually have continuity everywhere. That should be... That's good. That's good. That's good. 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 
All right, so that's okay. Well, let's focus our attention. If you follow the output of this, it runs through to the filter cap, and then it runs off through the AC line, AC line, over to this area here. So let's test some of these resistors. First, let's test continuity to make sure there's no open spots. That's okay. That's okay. That's That's okay. That's all right. Well, that all seems okay. Um, but let's test the resistors. Four hundred eighty-two. That's correct. Should be four seventy, but three point eight. That's correct. Should be three point nine, but that's okay. One point eight. Four point three. Three point eight. Pretty sure that's what that's supposed to be. Yep. Okay. Well, um, we could have something going on with the flyback. That die was all right. 2.2. How come you're not letting me? 2.5. What does, we know our HOT is okay. Yep, how about our critical safety cap? Uh, in this case it's, is it this way? It's, I'm not sure how to read it on the 4900, but there we go. There we go. So that's the HOT we're reading across, and there we go. So that's how you read it on the 4900. Negative on each one of these, and caddy corner, just like the 7000 appears to be. All right, so that's not bad. Um, I have a feeling, my feeling and my suspicion is correct. We are got a problem child on our hands, just as I thought. Uh, not sure why there's a jumper. Oh, it's part of that mod, okay. Well, we got some horrible solder joints here. We've got some horrible solder joints, one here. I don't even think that's in the circuit. It is not. Look at that. Bingo, C507 is not even in the circuit. Where, here it is, right here. Right there, see that? Look at this when I move the cap. Hello! So that's not even soldered in. Nope, not in the slightest. So, we got bad rework. That's always fun. So now I'm basically going to have to go over all of the rework that was done to this and verify that no... Look at... I don't think this one's soldered in either. Look at this. That cap was not soldered in. Then you got this right here. I don't think that's even soldered in. I mean, I didn't look at this that close when we were doing our perusal earlier. Wow. All right. Uh. 
So we had one cap that was for sure not soldered in place. I'm not sure what that would cause. Just looking around here for previous work. We're going to have to go through and with the meter and verify that we have continuity in all these replaced caps. Sorry, I'm not talking, I'm just looking here. Yeah, this rework is pretty, uh, pretty shoddy. And it's always fun fixing, reworking rework is always fun. I don't think this resistor is an issue. I mean, it's not the right rating, but I don't think it's our the problem. I don't think it's our problem. Hmm. Okay. Let's take a look here. All right, well now I'm gonna have to go through and, and verify that the rework didn't lift any pads or do some type of damage here. That's okay, that's okay. At the end of that? Is that the end of that? That is indeed the end of that. done that. Okay. I'm half tempted to put another voltage regulator in and try it again with those two caps that weren't soldered in. But I'm thinking the, you know, I'm thinking the better of that 
and probably should not do that. Something has to be shorted, but I mean, even if you had a shorted HOT, that should take out the fuse. The fuse is not the fuse is not being shorted. I wonder, or I'm sorry, the fuse is not being blown. It's not opening. That's what I meant to say. I wonder if we have a short on any of the legs here. Nothing on that one. Nothing on that one. So, we have a short on that one. Is that supposed to be shorted? Yes. So that is the frame. That is correct. So, another red herring there. Um, did we measure R504? 46? Yeah, I think we did that one. Wait a minute. What's going on here? On this one, R504. Seven. Didn't we already do this? R504, 47 ohms. Yes, okay. It's important to test on the bottom side because the legs get oxidized and if we read here 46.6 okay huh so we tested this one was 22 ohms across there that was the same something has to be bad but see it's gonna come down to trying to find the shorted component. It may be the flyback. What about the thermistor? There's a TH501 is a thermistor here. This little thing that gets hot and puts a shadow across the... You can see here on the side of the resistor it looks kind of burned. It's the heat from this thermistor. Let's check the thermistor. TH501. And it reads... 7.7. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Seven point two. Yep. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm wondering if we have a flyback problem because I don't see anything else offhand. Um, the resistors all check okay. There's no open traces from what I could tell. Uh, we did find those two open caps, but I don't want to risk blowing up my last voltage regulator on the fact that it may have been one of those caps out of circuit. Could have been. Uh, we don't have any open or bad rectifier diodes, the thermistor, this resistor. The B plus resistor is about 30 ohms too high, but I don't think that would cause the voltage regulator to get shorted. Um, the solder joints appear to be correct. The wires are going to the right spots, even though this is remote mounted and it should be down here. Um, the wiring is okay. All of the components by the vertical, I'm sorry, I keep saying that, by the voltage regulator are okay. There's no caps that are in backwards from what I saw. Yeah, I'm wondering if we simply have a bad flyback, but... Uh, I'm not, I mean... I'm not sure if there's a way to perform the light bulb test on here. Ideally, you would just remove the output of the B plus resistor from the circuit, just like you do on any other chassis, and I should be able to perform the light bulb test. I wonder if we could try that. Um, I don't know, I'll have to do some research, but in the meantime, 
I think I'm going to change the flyback and try this again because I didn't find anything I didn't find anything bad there's a couple other diodes in here I want to test real quick down in here that one's okay see those aren't even on the power circuit and I don't think anything over here is actually bad because HOT is not dying. It could be a bad filter cap, but I don't think so. We can change the filter cap as well. See, the problem is if I change the filter cap and the flyback, and then it works, I don't know what the I don't know if it was the filter cap. I don't know if it was the flyback. It's I, I don't have enough I don't have enough of these on hand to just change one thing at a time. Okay, that wasn't it, that wasn't it, that wasn't it, wasn't it. There it is. And then I go through four or five voltage regulators. Nobody wants that. So, uh, <coughs> um, I'm torn. Um, let me, I'm going to cut away. Let me think about what I want to do, and I'll come back. Well, I've decided to go ahead and remove the filter cap to take a look at it. And I'm kind of glad I did because there's clear evidence of leakage. If you look at the... Look at here, you can see the clear evidence of leakage around there. And our purple wire here from this resistor that obviously opened up because they replaced it, uh, it runs directly to our filter cap, the, the positive leg, leg of our filter cap. So uh, I'm going to toss in a new filter cap. This is my last one. So I don't know if this will fix our problem, but I'm still skeptical of the flyback itself. I couldn't find nearly anything else that was bad. Um, Yeah, let's put a new filter cap in, and if we go like so, positive, I'm trying to remember how I did this without having to scrape away the trace. I don't think that there's really any way to do it because the ground plane is here. And, yeah, there's not really any way to do it other than scraping away the trace. You know, if you put it in here like this, you still have to, yeah, we'll just do it the old-fashioned way here. Okay, just like that. All right, so positive is this way. Negative is there. All right, so let's... There you go. It's just quick and easy. That's how you do it. <coughs> positive and then the negative obviously is here to the negative plane. So, all right. Filter cap is now replaced. Um, I need to clean. I'll clean up the electrolyte and the flux and everything when we're done. But I'm half tempted to try it again. And if it takes out the voltage regulator, I've got the one from here that I can that I can slave in for a third try after changing the flyback out. 
and I can always order. I mean, I'm, I need to order more anyway because I have my last one. But I'm tempted to try it again after fixing those two caps with the leg being out of circuit and this leaky filter cap. I'm tempted to try it again. I'd, I, I'd like to jury rig a fuse in off this. I don't know what rating to put though. I'd say maybe one amp. If I could put a fuse in circuit on the regulator, I could save it from being taken out if something was shorted. But I would have to experiment with this working one over here to find out what type and rating. So we don't... Oh, I just noticed something else. <laughs> the ferrite core is gone out of the... <laughs> it's gone! So there's not going to be any way to adjust our vertical, or I'm sorry, our horizontal size. So that's that's interesting. Um, make sure our coil actually reads good in circuit. Again, that that should affect the horizontal, not the power. The voltage regulator wouldn't care if the horizontal coil was missing. You would just blow the HOT, or you'd have collapse. One of the two. Yeah, 0 0.5, so that's good. Hmm. Well, you only live once. So let's throw another regulator in there after fixing the caps and changing that, uh, changing this out. But I would imagine if this was the actual cause, it would take this new resistor out as well. But, um, what I need to do, uh, there's no reason to even check for B+, because if it's if the voltage regulator is being shorted, something was bad. Now, whether it was the caps or this, I can't say. I'm gonna, I'll put a new regulator in. We'll try it again. If it gets shorted immediately, I'll put a new flyback in. I'll take my last regulator, put it in, and then see what happens. I hate, I hate doing. I hate shotgunning parts in. But there's nothing. We didn't find anything shorted. I think this was hooked up to a non-isolation transformer system. Because somebody has replaced these two diodes. They're clearly, they've clearly been replaced compared to these. These are covered in dirt and grime and these are not. So I don't know if they've just been cleaned up, but I think they've been replaced. But we've tested and double tested. We don't have any shorted components in this system here circuit. I didn't find any. Uh, we didn't have any shorted or open components in this circuit over here. Uh, none of this would cause voltage regulator to short. The HOT and, and critical safety cap are good. So it has to either be the filter cap, these caps that had the bad legs, or the flyback. That's all it could be. So I think at this point I'm going to throw another regulator in, test it, and see if that fixed it. Now the problem is if it does fix it, if it does work, I don't know if it was the caps with the bad leg solder joints or if it was the filter cap, but not a big deal. It won't be the end of the world. So let's get that done. I'll come back. We'll have it on the tube and see what happens. All right, real quick, I lied. This is that bag that I had that I said I only had one STR381 left on it. But I went through and checked uh, some other bags and it turns out I've actually got uh, two more two more here so I have three in total that we can play with um, but yeah so I've got a couple more we can mess around with if we need to but for now let's put this one in and see what happens Now the question is, there they are, I was going to say, what did I do with the screws? Just tight. You don't need them over torqued. As soon as the screw stops, 
That's all you need. Okay, let's make sure that we are good to go. On the frame. That right there is through our B plus resistor. Just like on the 7000, you read, you know, 0 0.150, that right there is the reading through our B plus resistor. So, yeah, then that's the leg that is shorting. So if we go back to our B plus resistor, yeah, 174, like I say, it should be 150. Here's the other chassis to my left over here, 150. So I don't think 27 ohms is going to really, that's not going to cause this problem. I mean, it could, but I don't think so. Uh, all right, well, with those caps and the filter cap, let's turn it on, see what we get. Okay, take two. I think this time I'm just going to flip the switch real quick to try and save the regulator in case it's still no good here. So let's give it a try. One, two, three. Oh, nope. <laughs> just <laughs> click, click, short it immediately. Yep. God dang it. Uh, well, I guess it's flyback time. Um, yeah, I mean, if I turn it on here, you can hear that the isolation transformer is just hums. Yeah, listen to it. So, yeah, dead short. Well, <laughs> let's uh, change the flyback, try again. Oh, so a new flyback did not fix the issue. Put a new flyback in and it promptly shorted the voltage regulator. So I have my very last one installed. So I did a little poking around and I determined that the output, do you see this white line here? This white line separates the high voltage side from the rest of the board. So there's only, the only jumper that connects this side of the board to this side of the board is right here. So I removed that jumper from the circuit right here. You can see that this is out of the circuit. And now I can turn this on on the bench and we can test our B plus, not our B plus, I should say. We can test our, uh, yeah, I guess B plus. So we go to the red side of the resistor here, and let me get my meter hooked up here. Let's go to here, and our ground we can hook up to here, and okay. Let me go to volts DC. I need another lead here to touch the light bulb. All right, so with this jumper removed, we can now do our test. So we can actually turn this on. One, two, three. And it goes to unregulated 180 volts, just like the other light bulb tests that we do. So now if we touch ground here, which is the frame, and then take our lead and touch our light bulb, it works. However, we're 163 volts. So if, let's try the other lead. I thought it was the red one. It could be the blue one. So we'll touch this again and touch here and we get, uh, well, my meter, let's go to this one. There we go. Let's try it again here. 137. So I think that may be correct. I can't say, but if you look, the light bulb is lit up. Light bulb lights up. So that's the regulated side of the B plus is the blue wire. You can see it goes down from 173 to 137, but it's not that much of a load on the circuit. So anyway, so our regulation power regulation side is working. All of this side of the chassis is good now. So our problem is going to be on the output side. So we need to do more some more testing here. See what we can figure out as to why it's bad on this side. Well, I've made some discoveries here. Uh, if we recall, uh, the note here says that the VR, the VR started to spark. Well, that's an incorrect statement because we saw the B-plus test works okay, or the light bulb test works okay. I checked everything a, a million times comparing it to a working one. I could find nothing wrong. 
So I removed the HOT. And if we look here, there is a burn mark right through the insulator. Right there. Look at that. That. So it's not the voltage regulator that is sparking. The HOT is what was sparking. So that was an incorrect statement from the owner saying what was wrong. And if we look at the actual chassis, there's a big scorch and burn mark right here. So I think there was some type of contaminant on here that punctured through and was grounding out the HOT. So now I'm confident, by the way, this is my very last voltage regulator. It's my very last voltage regulator. Uh, I still have this one intact from this working one. I don't want to rob it because this is a working chassis. But now that I have discovered this, I am confident that we can fix this. Now I'm interested, I think the HOT was shorted to the frame, but I don't understand how it wasn't blowing the fuse. See, it reads okay, but I think it was shorted to the frame. So, I want to put a new insulator in here and a new HOT and see if that resolves our problem. Because we know from our light bulb test that it is not something on the voltage regulator side. It's something here, and I've tested, tested and checked everything imaginable and it's got to be that. It's got to be that. There's nothing else it could be. And I just happened to have in my bag that had my very last voltage regulator a brand new HOT, 2DS871. So let's put this in here with a new insulator. Insulators! Mauna. Come on. So I had no reason to suspect the HOT was the cause because it read properly in circuit. And the, the notes that I was given said the voltage regulator was sparking, but it was not. It was the HOT that was sparking. And most likely because it was shorting to the frame. And I'm I am confident that this will resolve the problem. If not, this will have to be put on hold until I can order some more voltage regulators because I really don't want to rob this one from the working chassis. Let's make sure that this is flat. Yeah, I scraped that away. I'm about to scrape you away for someone else to take. I kind of always knew I'd end up your blown HOT. Alright. I think that should be okay. Get back on there, you ornery bastard. What in tarnation? And this also could have been an issue of somebody over tightening the screws. Like I say, once they stop turning, that's all you need. There we go. Make sure it's seated all the way, I guess. Okay. Now let's make sure that the case is not touching the frame. It is not. Let's make sure it reads correctly. And it does. Okay, moment of truth. 
If this doesn't work, I am out of ideas. And yeah, I did re-solder in that jumper here for the B-plus for the rest of the board here, so... Okay, uh, let's get it on a tube and cross our fingers one last time here. Okay, so... Here goes nothing. One, two, three. Mm, I... Well, I did turn it off and on real quick. Hold on. Uh-oh! Holy crap, it works. <laughs> that was the problem. Wow, okay, so the HO... Oh, oh, damn it. Zap me a little bit. These don't auto-discharge, and I... The static here build up. Uh, wow, okay, so our problem was... I put it on upside down. Not that it matters. We had... A, an HOT that had arced to the frame and shorted through the insulator and was taking out the voltage regulator coupled with multiple bad solder joints, broken pads, bad rework, and all kinds of issues. So it's possible the flyback was uh, actually okay, but I've already got the new one in, so I'll just ask the owner if he wants me to leave the new one in or put the old one back in to save him some money. It's up to him. But it looks like all of our problem was caused by this. And I'm just flabbergasted because it was described to me as the voltage regulator arcing, not the HOT. And it wasn't, I didn't discover this until I got to my wit's end with checking and double checking and triple checking everything else that I took this out and discovered, oh, wait a minute, it's the HOT that's arcing, not the voltage regulator. So this had arced itself through the insulator and was causing all my problem. Uh, so, wow, or um, the problem. So we got all of the, by now, I've got all of the solder joints reflowed, repaired, fixed, new HOT, new voltage regulator, new insulators, uh, new flyback, and so now nothing is left really but to hook up a video signal and see if we can make it look good. Uh, I am not going to be able to adjust vertical, I'm sorry, horizontal. I am not going to be able to adjust horizontal size because as we saw, there was no ferrite core in, spin this around, there, in the uh, coil. So we're going to have to live with whatever size the horizontal is. So let's turn this on now. And let's see if we can give this an image, make it look fairly decent here. All right, let's turn it back on. Springs back to life, okay. We will start by turning brightness. Uh, well, we'll leave brightness where it's at. Let's just turn up the flyback here. Uh, okay, uh, what can we get here? All right, we do have an image, that's good. Vertical hold. Uh, there we go. And let's turn up brightness a bit more. Obviously, focus. Gorgeous. All right. Vertical size is going to be here. And vertical size does not shrink enough because I think that resistor is... You know, 4 ohms out of tolerance. It's supposed to be 4 ohms, I think. Or no, it's supposed to be 8 ohms. I think it's 4 ohms. So I can't shrink the image enough vertically. We do have a black bar on the side. If I shift the horizontal... Um, well, that's as far to the right as it goes. Yeah, okay. Uh, I can't adjust horizontal size. I can adjust horizontal position, but that's as far right as it goes. Um, but the chassis is now operational. I will let the owner decide what he wants to do about the flyback. Uh, there is no current re uh, replacement for the 4900 horizontal width coil. There is for the medium res 19 inch, but there is not a replacement for the standard res 19 inch. Uh, I have, I may have another ferrite core here, um, but I don't know for sure. So I'm going to 
sorry, my phone rang. I had to go answer it. I'm going to actually leave everything the way that it is. I'm going to leave that 4 ohm resistor in place of where the 8 ohm should be because I don't know if they're trying to run this on a tube where the yoke is different and they need more height. I don't know. I'm not going to mess with any of that. Um, and if the owner wants me to put the original flyback back on, I will. But I'll clean up all the flux, get everything situated and cleaned and done, and um, call this basically complete. But, you know, I went through three. The original one is there. I went through three voltage regulators until we found um, the quite literal smoking gun here. And it was all... I would have found this much earlier if the note had said HOT sparking and not voltage regulator sparking. But anyway... Um, Yep, this is probably the most difficult and head-scratching K4900 I've ever come across. So, uh, I'm just glad that I was able to get it figured out. And we all learn. Every time something comes through, we learn something new. So, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Well, let me rephrase. I appreciate you watching. Thank you for watching. Uh, like, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Got lots more stuff on the way. This was very interesting, and I'm glad we were able to tackle it. So, stay tuned. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time.